Are you related to Rashawn Dick? No. When you met with the DA's office, you met with them so often that you actually lost your job, didn't you? Yes. Okay, let's get to it. When, when you met and spoke with the DA's office investigator, uh, Mr. Hamilton, as far as you know, he is an investigator, law enforcement investigator for the DA's office, right? Yes. That he would like to take you out when this was all over, didn't he? Yes, but on Tuesday, I didn't come to court because um, I received a message from Mr. Hamilton, like, kind of late, because I had ended up blocking him because of... Uh, Sometimes I would get phone calls. It wasn't about court. So I had blocked him, told me that he had a relation with the judge, and he was going to get a warrant out on me and get me arrested. He know I was it because it's only me and my kid. But you got locked up? Yeah. Um, those messages still in that phone? Yes. Who has that phone? Ms. Hampton uh, took my phones and my ID. Did you tell anyone in the district attorney's office that the judge could kiss your ass? <laughs> No, I, I told Mr. Hampton to have the judge to call me so I could tell him I've been harassed. That's exactly what I said. If you're new, make sure y'all hit that notification bell, that like, share, comment, and subscribe. Grab a seat. We finna dig deep. At this time, I'm going to ask that you fasten your seatbelts. What's up, YouTube family, and welcome back to the channel. It's your host, Jay, and today we're back with another Young Thug YSL Rico trial update. Yesterday, we discussed a witness, Ms. Bennett, who was actually caught in the middle of an intense cross-examination from the state as well as the defense. But today, we definitely got to dive a little bit deeper into new revelations that are exposing the cracks in the state's case. Now today, the defense team wasted no time in dissecting the credibility of the state's witness. But was it really the witness or actually the state? The defense, led by YSL Adams, meticulously questioned Ms. Bennett's actual alleged police reports, her background, and criminal history, breaking down her prior statements and connections to the case, revealing inconsistencies that actually cast doubt on the prosecution's narrative. Now yesterday, we said that Ms. Bennett might actually expose corruption from the state, but today, seems like it might be another potential L for the state. Whew, let's dig. Supposedly to talk about the case, yes. but, but he wanted to meet you by yourself. Yes. You did not feel comfortable with the interactions you've been having with the district attorney's office, and so you brought your 20-year-old son along with you. Yes. All right. All right. I'll break it up. You didn't feel comfortable going to meet him by yourself? Nope. Because you didn't feel comfortable going to meet him by yourself, you brought your 20-year-old son with you? Yes. Was that before or after you met with Mr. Hamilton and he told you, don't talk to nobody else? That was after. He, he told me before that um, I came in, I seen Miss Love, and um, that's when I told y'all yesterday that me and Miss Love, we only discussed for a brief because they was like trying to tip me. And um, that's when I went to talk to him and a um, couple of more people from their team that I don't see right now. And um, then he ended up getting me by himself and um, asking me um, to give him my number and that he's gonna contact me and that I ain't need to speak with no one else. And if they contact me, do not um, answer or speak to them. Only him. Okay. He told you that he would like to take you out when this was all over, didn't he? Yes. And then he's, as far as you know, he is an investigator, law enforcement investigator for the DA's office, right? Yes. You weren't, you didn't have a problem discussing with the district attorney's office um, this supposed incident from back in 2013, right? No, I never had a problem. Right. And, and in fact, when going back to you being asked yesterday about whether you were scared or anything like that, when you met with the DA's office, you met with them so often that you actually lost your job, didn't you? Yes. They would contact you and say, hey, you got to come talk to us. And because of the number of times that you had to just kind of drop everything, leave your job and come yeah, talk to them, you lost your job, didn't you? Yes. I sustained injections to form even the to Mr. Patterson. You lost your job because of having to go meet with them, right? Yes, but they wasn't meeting with me every time they tell me to, though. Now that is a tight situation. On one hand, you gotta feel bad for Miss Bennett, but then on the other hand, look at the side of the street she chose to be on. But is Adams cooking, or is it just warming up? Let's dig. Yeah, 
when you just to be clear, when you said a little a little while ago that Miss um, Love tried to, to tip you, is that what you said? Yes. What did you mean by that? Because um, when I um, met with Miss Love at um, the Wendy's that she discussed, it was some things that um, we had talked about, and um, she told me like it was some things we talked about that wasn't gonna be brought up. But she wouldn't bring it up to me again. Or we wouldn't have to discuss it. Okay. All right. In um, in your conversations, either with investigator or DA, they were asking you questions about 2013, correct? Yes. And you were asked yesterday whether uh, you recall this supposed incident from back in 2013. Remember that? Yes. Your answer yesterday was you really didn't remember, right? Yes. Not talking about yesterday now, but going back a couple months, whenever it was you met with them, you told them then, and them being the district attorney's office, whether it's an investigator or the you told them then, I really don't have a lot of memory or remember much about 2013, right? Yes. Now, I want to ask you specifically um, about this supposed incident from back in 2013, okay? Do you recall making a report to Zone 3 police about an incident that you said occurred on May the 12th of 2013? Yes, sir. You do not? Yes, sir. Is it true that you told police officers in 2013 that Jeffrey Williams, DK, and someone you said was Jeffrey Williams' brother, came to your house on Mother's Day? Yes, sir. Is it true that you told the police that they robbed you on that day? No, sir. Is it true that you told the police that Walt DK took your gun and then shot your gun into the wall? No, sir. That didn't happen, did it? No, sir. Now, not that this is very convincing to the jury, but ask yourself, where are the tapes? Where are the recordings of this alleged information? And if this is what you call the State Land Foundation, I'm more curious to see the foundation that they'll end up laying. If you haven't subscribed, y'all make sure y'all hit that notification bell and subscribe. Let's dig. All right. Is that a picture of Micah Anderson? Yes. Okay. Now, Micah Anderson is um, the father of um, your child. Yes. He is also a, certainly back in 2013, he was a, a person who was in, in, in music. He was a rapper. Yes. His rap name was uh, Ola Player. Yes. All right. Now, uh, can you see, is there something on your screen next to your left hand? Yes. That is um, Michael Anderson, correct? Yes. That's the father of your, ch of your child. Yes. And um, that is the person that you've just referred to as Ola Player. Yes. Um, <coughs> also goes by the name King Slime? Not that I know of. Okay. I want to show you what's been entered into evidence at the PS5. Now, you can look at the screen, you see that the screen depicts um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six individuals, correct? Yes. Um, the person in the middle, that's you, isn't it? Yes. And you have on a uh, t-shirt on yes. the back, which on the back says, Free King Slime. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And on the bottom it says, Ola Player. Yes. And that is a picture in that, in that, uh, on that T-shirt of Mr. Anderson, Ola Player. Uh, the shirt that you were wearing um, on that day was essentially a T-shirt saying free Ola Player or free King Slime. I mean, you're referring to the same person when you say King Slime and Ola Player. True? I wouldn't say it's true, but that um, shirt, it was given to me. Okay. And I wore it, and we performed some of his songs. Okay. Mm, no, nah, I just performed his songs. Okay. He wasn't there. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. 980, Confederate Avenue. Does that yes. ring a bell? Yes. All right. Now... I don't want to embarrass you, but the truth is, you and Mr. Anderson um, stayed at that location together, right? Yes. Is, is it true that y'all sold drugs out of that location? Yes. Would you consider yourselves, you and Mr. Anderson at that point, to kind of been like the neighborhood drug dealers? <laughs> no. All right. I mean, folks came to your place to get drugs, true? Yes. All right. In fact, as, as far back as like 2008, um, there was a burglary, or someone kicked in the door. Um, in June 
of 2013 is when you and Mr. Anderson were both arrested for some drug trafficking charges in Clayton County, correct? I think it was in June, yeah. And a little bit after that, I think maybe in 2014, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you and Mr. Anderson were again arrested for some drug charges, um, specifically at 980 Confederate Avenue here in Fulton County, right? Um, no, I remember I was arrested, but he wasn't arrested again with me. But you were both charged, right? I'm not sure. Okay. If we were both charged. All right. Let me ask you if it would uh, help to refresh your memory if I showed you a document in regards to uh, that Fulton County case. Do you think this would help to refresh your memory? Okay. All right. Uh, in Fulton County, based on uh, drugs found at 980 Confederate Avenue, true? Yes. And you were subsequently convicted in Clayton County based on drugs that, well, a drug offense in Clayton County, right? Yes. And that was um, you and Micah Anderson in Clayton County. Yes. yes. You and Micah Anderson in Fulton County as well, true? Yes. All right. Do you remember that some, or do you remember, uh, if, you, if you do, do you remember that sometime in May of 2013, Jeffrey Williams, DK, and someone named Buck Buck came to your apartment? No. Okay. Do you remember that uh, those three individuals came to your apartment and it wasn't Mr. Williams, DK, and his, Mr. Williams' brother, but Mr. Williams, DK, and this person named Buck Buck? Do you remember that? No. Okay. Did those three individuals that I've just named, did they leave your apartment and Buck Buck take a quantity of heroin that you had at your apartment? I never had heroin, no. Did, at some point after those individuals left your apartment, you have a conversation with Micah Anderson about the fact Assume that Buck Buck had stolen heroin objection, from your right? apartment? No. I, objection. I'm over objections. Did you, and then for purposes of, of, I think there's a lot of talking going on, um, did you, at some point after those individuals left your apartment, did you have a conversation with your boyfriend, Micah Anderson, about the fact that Buck Buck had stolen some heroin from your apartment? No. No. Okay. Did you receive a phone call after that incident with someone apologizing for Buck Buck stealing the heroin from your apartment? No. Did you discuss with Mr. Anderson that Jeffrey Williams was going to pay for the heroin that Buck Buck had stolen from your apartment? Objection, Your Honor. That is the hearsay and there is no exception for you. No. Do you remember an officer Kirkland and someone from the Atlanta Police Department crime scene that comes to your apartment? Um, I don't know where officer came to my apartment, but um, I don't think it was on the 13th, but um, like my building, it, it had been shot at, so I don't know like exactly what day that was, but it just wasn't my, my, my specific apartment. It was the building. Yeah. Okay. Not specifically your apartment, just your building. Yeah. And, and your apartment, or the building, is right, has multiple apartments, is that true? Yes. You had supposedly uh, reported. No. You were, you've never had to come in to a courtroom to testify about any supposed robbery in 2013 at your apartment, have you? No, this is how I knew. In 2013 or 2014 even, you were never contacted by anyone from the district attorney's office saying they wanted to talk to you about a robbery that occurred at your apartment in May of 2013. True? Nobody never contacted me. 2013, 14, 15, not that. The first time that you were contacted or anyone asked you any questions about something that happened way back in 2013 was about a year ago. Is that right? Yes. And you told them that there was no robbery at your apartment in May of 2013. Isn't that true? Yes. I mean, you, you were never, you're not even aware of, of your name being included in any sort of a RICO indictment, are you? No. Or any incident from 2013 even being a part of any RICO indictment, right? No. Did anyone from the DA's office, anytime you spoke to them, whether it was an investigator, or 
assistant DA ever tell you, listen, we just want you to come in and, and, and say something about Jeffrey Williams? Anyone ever say anything like that to you? No. Is there ever any time in 2013 where you said to Michael Anderson, Jeffrey Williams and two other guys came to my apartment and one of them put a gun to my head? No. Was there ever a time where you said to Michael Anderson, Jeffrey Williams and two other guys came to my apartment and one of them uh, shot into the wall while our child, your baby, was there? No. Was there ever a time where you told Michael Anderson that there was this robbery and shooting at your apartment and Michael Anderson still continued to record music with Jeffrey Williams? You're repeating. Yeah. Was there ever a time where you told Michael Anderson, hey, Jeffrey Williams, DK, and some other guy came and stole and robbed me, shot up my apartment. And then after that, Michael Anderson still continued to record music with the person who supposedly involved in shooting up his house with baby there? No. But certainly you would tell this court or tell this jury that after May of 2013, you and Ola Playa still continue to have a relationship with Jeffrey Williams, right? Um, after May, I, I had got arrested. Okay. Yes. But I ain't, I ain't had like, like no problems in there with him. Like, we ain't had no problems. You were arrested in Clayton County in June, right? Mm hmm. Um, then you actually went to, went into custody, went to prison in, was it 2015? Yes. And you were in there for how long? Um, I think like two years, six months. Okay. Now, you are still on probation for the Fulton County case, right? No. No? Is that done? Yes. Okay. Are you on probation in the Clayton County case? No, I'm done with that too. Okay. You've got another case that you're on probation for, right? A misdemeanor suspended I'm license? Yes, um, to On Tuesday of this week, let me see. The 26th. All right, the 26th of March, 2024. All right, you didn't come to court in the morning because you had to go and do the 20 hours community service in Clayton County, true? No. Okay, when I did had, you have to go? I had, um, had to go prior before then. When you met, okay, let's get to it. When, when you met and spoke with the DA's office investigator, uh, Mr. Hamilton, he was trying to get you to come to court, true? Yes. You told him that you couldn't come to court because you had a probation case in Clayton County. Right? Yes. And so Mr. Hamilton knew that you had a pending case or a, a probation case in another jurisdiction based on what you told him, right? Yes. And what you told that investigator was that I can't come to court the next day because I got to go do 20 hours of community service in Clayton County. You told him that, right? Yes, because they said if I didn't do the community service, um, they were going to arrest me and suspend my license. That's what Clayton County said, right? Yes. And so you, you didn't come to court because you had to go do the community okay. service. <laughs> okay. On Tuesday of this week, let me see. The 26th, all right? The 26th of March, 2024. All right? You didn't come to court in the morning because you had to go and do the 20 hours community service in Clayton County, true? No. Okay. When I did had, you have to go? I had, um, had to go prior before then, but on Tuesday, I didn't come to court because, um, I received a message from Mr. Hamilton, like, kind of late, because I had ended up blocking him because uh, sometimes I would get phone calls. It wasn't about court, so I had blocked him. But uh, on Tuesday, I ended up responding to him later because he told me that he had a relation with the judge and he was going to get a warrant out on me and get me arrested. And uh, I told him I would come in, but uh, they ended up coming pick me up, like, surround my house, move my cameras and stuff like that. He had my um my eleven year old outside for like a hour and a half by himself because he know I was it because it's only me and my kid. But you got locked up. Yeah. After your conversation with Mr. Hamilton of the DA's office. Yeah. Those texts. The, the, were you speaking with Mr. Hamilton and members of the DA's office by way of text messages? Sometimes text, sometimes phone call. Okay. You still have uh, the phone that you shared those messages with the DA's office. 
man the allegations coming from the state witness i know the state is over there hot i would definitely be hot sitting back here in your own witness expose the detective's faulty play definitely got to be a blow to the prosecution and evidently we're still still been in the hot seat from last week from his altercations with the judge YSL Adams and still are definitely on the same page letting Adams go out and take the lead but with the state being hot oh Miss Love's not going out without a fight let's dig hearing court Tuesday March 26 Miss Love Miss Love Miss Love Miss Love Miss Love Miss Love did you send to anyone in the district attorney's office a communication stating that you did not go to court because you were in the hospital? Yes, I sent that to um, Mr. Hamilton. And did you send a communication to anyone in the district attorney's office stating you did not care what the judge said, no one could make you testify, and give... Did you give us that one? No. I uh, will rule the objection. Did you tell anyone in the district attorney's office that the judge could kiss your ass? <laughs> no. I, I told Mr. Hampton to have the judge to call me so I could tell him I've been harassed. That's exactly what I said. Your Honor, Commission, you testified on cross-examination with Mr. Adams that the reason you did not appear in court Tuesday, March 26th, was that you were afraid of Lieutenant Hampton? Yes, I had blocked him. Did you send to anyone in the district attorney's office a communication stating that you did not go to court because you were in the hospital? Yes, I sent that to um, Mr. Hamilton. And did you send a communication to anyone in the district attorney's office stating you did not care what the judge said, no one could make you testify, and give, did you give specific, explicit instructions as to what to tell the judge to do? No. I, I will rule the objection. Did you tell anyone in the district attorney's office that the judge could kiss your ass? <laughs> no. I, I told Mr. Hampton to have the judge to call me so I could tell him I've been harassed. That's exactly what I said. Your Honor, permission to treat the witness pursuant to Brown? I'll allow it. Thank you. I told you I wanted to speak with you about something that happened to you in 2013 that you told me I've blocked out that entire time in my life. Yes. Isn't it true that you teared up and said that you had gone to prison and while you were in prison, your mother became terminally ill? Yes. Isn't it true that you said and had on a shirt when we met that was commemorating the date and your mother? Objection relevance. Overruled. Yes. Isn't it true that you began to say, when I asked you, did you ever get counseling? Better yet, did I ask you about counseling? Yes. Isn't it true that you told me that you had wanted to harm yourself because of everything that you had gone through? Yes. Isn't it true that I told you that you should get some kind of counseling for that? You told me you would help me, but you didn't. Thank you for saying that. So we discussed counseling. <laughs> yes. Isn't it true that I communicated with you beyond that via telephone at various times? Objection made. I'll rule. I mean, I'll sustain the objection. You can rephrase. Isn't it true that we talked even after that? Yeah. You, you. Isn't it true that I called you to check on how you were doing? And probably like two, three times after that. Okay. Ooh, Miss Love is hot. Tone on a whole nother level. Attitude on fleek right now. And see how her team is even looking at her? Let's dig. Yes. Each one of y'all I talked to, I told y'all the same thing that I didn't know nothing about what y'all was talking about. And Y'all start pressing the issue, like, you, you gotta go in, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Isn't like, it true that the only thing that we told you you had to do was to appear for some your subpoena? What subpoena? Miss Bennett, is it your testimony that you never received a subpoena to appear in court? No, y'all, I, I, I don't receive word of mouth or text when I gotta come to court. I never had a paperwork telling me I had to come to court. Miss Bennett, so your testimony is that you were never served a subpoena? You are asked to answer. I can't say I was served a subpoena, but I know the first time somebody came and see me was like last year. And that's when they first talked about the incident and they showed me a police report. And they was like, um, to your knowledge, did you make this? And when I read the police report, it, it didn't make sense. And I told them no. And um, I, don't, I don't know his name. And he, he let me read it and he was like, um, do you remember anything like this happening? And I was like, no. And um, then he had me sign the paper. 
but he had police report on top of the paper that he had me sign, so I didn't get to read that paper. And um, he was, I was asking him, but I asked him what I signed for, and he told me he, I was signing because he need proof that I came and seen him, and he he seen me, and I had to sign that he seen me. And so I asked him, I'm like, so I'm in any type of trouble, like, do I supposed to go to court? Because I'm like, he talking about, um, I was a witness to a crime in 2013. I'm like, sir, do you know what, what year it is? I was like, I can't really tell you nothing about 2013 beside my child. Like, a lot of things had happened to me. And I told him I couldn't discuss that with him. And he just told me to sign a paper stating that he seen me. But he didn't tell me what the paper is. He didn't let me read it. It was another paper on top of the paper. So I didn't even know what I was signing for. I probably could have signed my life away because he didn't let me read it. Isn't it true that you were served a subpoena on that day and you were given that I wasn't given anything. Only thing I ever had was cards with different you know, attorneys or investigators or some like numbers and stuff like that. This is crazy. It's almost fascinating to see how the defense has actually disseminated the prosecution's claims piece by piece. The nuisance revealed during the cross examinations are crucial in revealing the truth behind the complex legal proceedings of this RICO trial. But is a RICO trial actually being built? I'm still waiting to see the furtherance of the actual gang through these actual allegations. Even looking at the junior prosecution team, you can see the looks on their face say this is not looking good for the state. Did Miss Love drop the ball or did the state go too far? But you gotta admit, even right now, it's still good to see Thugger smile, even though in the court, it's still anybody's ball. Let's dig. And on that article clothing where you have ABG, what did it say for? Was it a rap group. What's the rap group name? Can't think of the name of it. Is it your testimony it doesn't stand for Atlanta Blood Gang? No, I don't think it stands for Atlanta Blood Gang. Are you related to Rayshawn Dennis? No. Do you know Rayshawn Dennis? Yes. Are you all close? No. Do you know, did you know Donovan Thomas? No. Did I ask you about Donovan Thomas when we met on Moreland Avenue? I can't remember. Do you remember tearing up when I asked you about Donovan Thomas? Oh, nut, yes. Okay. You said, oh, nut, yes. So yeah, I had to think about who you said. All right. Is nut the name that you call Donovan Thomas? Yeah, I know by a real name too, but I didn't hear what you said. Okay. How long did you know Donovan Thomas? Uh, for a long period of time. Since you were what age, probably? <clears throat> 18 or something. Since you were about 15. Yeah, you said something about it. And did you indicate that it was messed up what happened? Yeah. And I had to stop and ask myself if I was there in the jury, what exactly did I learn today? I don't know if I learned that maybe it was potential witness intimidation or if this was just a big old play from the state. But as the trial progresses, questions are going to continue to loom over the validity of this actual RICO charge leveled against Young Thug and the YSL record label. Are these allegations based on concrete evidence or are they circumstantial? Or are they built on shaky testimonies and circumstantial links? But ask yourself, is there a potential mistrial brewing? Either way, one thing is certain, that the Young Thug YSL RICO trial is definitely far from over. So stay tuned as we continue to unravel the truth behind the lies with this being such a high profile case it's gonna be all lies y'all make sure y'all hit that like share comment and definitely don't forget to subscribe will young thug survive the fire or will the defense catch a l by the end of trial until next time it's your boy jay Pew. gone